guest Tom Farage, the president of the IPF, and we're here with Robert Keller, the general secretary of the IPF and the president of Powerlift America. Good morning, fellas. How's it going? Great. Good morning. We are doing very well. Nice. So we're here at Powerlift America Open Classic Nationals in Austin, Texas. And just give us quickly, like, how do you think the meet's going so far? Uh, the meet is running very well, and I'm very happy to be here with uh, Powerlifting America to see all these good lifts going on. Two sessions, uh, two days uh, already finished, and it was very exciting to see all the lifters. And uh, we are can't wait now to see the heavier woman and the heavier man. The same. Uh, I just want to say uh, the competitions are going very, very well. I just want to say thank you to all of the staff. Uh, that's making this thing go. Can't right. do it without them. And for you, Gaston, why is this a special event having you be here today? And for me, it's special because it's the first time in the history that I know that the uh, president of the IPF has been invited uh, to join a national uh, competition in uh, USA. And uh, therefore, I'm very happy to be here because I feel now that uh, Powerlifting America is part of the IPF fam family because before it was every time they and them. So therefore, it is very important for me to come here and to show uh, our friendship together. The IPF is a big family and that it's uh, always the same for the USA, should be part of this family and not uh, the contrary. Yeah. We're honored to have the IPF president here at the Powerlifting American National Championships. It's a milestone. Uh, we want to show to the American community that the relations between Powerlifting America and the IPF are solid, strong, and going into the future. So, All right. So thank, I just want to say thank you to Gaston for taking the trip. I know his schedule is extremely busy, uh, or my, our, but he made the trip uh, on, on short notice, and uh, we appreciate it. Thank you very much, You're Gaston, welcome. on behalf of the athletes, the officials from Powerlifting America for being here um, these last couple of days. Yeah, it means we, a great deal to us. You're welcome. And it means a great deal to us that Powerlifting America is going to become a full member at the upcoming General Assembly. We're very honored. Thank you. You're welcome. So, Gasson, um, first time your first time here in the U.S. for this meet, and it's first time getting to see our officials up close as they're refing the meet. Um, how so far? How do you think the officials have done, and how have the calls been so far at this meet? I think, uh, contrary to what uh, people uh, on Instagram talking about uh, bench press and so on, that there is a big mistake. I just see that here the rules uh, are applied, and that uh, it is not a big uh, issue uh, because that is what we said already before we uh, brought in these new rules. And I see that the officials doing here a great job and doing it correct. So. I can just say that they're doing all a great job, and I am also impressed that the Powerlifting America has so many officials so that they have no problem to uh, organize such meets. And sp speaking specifically about the bench rule, um, this was a big, you know, there was a lot of news that came out this year when the IPF changed the new bench rule to include an elbow depth criteria for the bench press. And so far, how specifically do you think that that rule should be officiated? And do you think that that rule is being officiated properly at this meet? I'm going to, I'm going to let Gaston answer that. Yeah. Uh, Gaston, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the bench press rules uh, is applied uh, according to our rule, but we must every time thinking what for this rule has been changed. It is not changed that now we go by millimeters to give a red light to athletes because I say every time we should first think in why we should give a white light and not a red light. So this is the major point. And when the people uh, pressing what they should press, then uh, the referee should be flexible. As I said, not too much flexible, but not going on millimeters on the point. And that is what we tell our referees. And so far in Luxembourg, we had a meet. We had a meet in Africa. We had now the meet here. We had the meet in uh, Finland and so on. So we have nowhere any problems. So it is just the people who don't like these changes uh, because now they see that they have to push something who make a big issue on the Instagram. But I don't care about uh, what they're saying. I just look what is going on on our meet. And that's the most important. 
the main deciding factor should be in favor of the lifter. Is that correct? Yes, it is like it is in our rules. When you have a doubt, then you must give a white light. And if there is something wrong, therefore we have a jury. The jury has a, a, a screen where they can rewatch the, the lift. And if then it was not good, then they can uh, rechange it, overrule it. So simple like that it is. But as I said, I was now in several meets and I have never seen that we had a big issue. I was in Iceland. I have told the referees the same. We had one woman uh, who got two times red light because uh, of one side of the arms was not in a correct position, the third lift was then fine. So and it's not an excuse to say, yeah, but here and there, if you can't uh, do it or your elbows are not in a good position, you have to have a smaller grip. That is uh, what it is for. Simple like that it is. And so uh, it's not important to make a big issue and thinking now we have changed. It is simple. When the people was not trying what they tried to push not anymore and bringing up the chest like we have in uh, Kazakhstan where the lifter just brought up the chest and got three white lights, what was then a mistake also by the referees because it states clear in our rules you must uh, go down with the arms. So uh, she should have uh, uh, got uh, three red lights. And this is the problem. And then we have to change. We uh, want to be an IOC sport. Then have, we have to uh, show our sport on a proper way and not that the people uh, outside our sport loving over, over us by saying, yeah, they do not push anything. What is that for a bench press? Yeah, we had uh, athletes uh, in, in some of our local meets, national meets and international meets. They were not even unlocking their elbows. They were still doing a bench shrug and lowering it to their chest millimeters and then pressing it out and calling it a bench press. So we had to take action. Uh, there are a lot of athletes out there that were concerned about this form uh, what they call a bench press but we made the correct decision um and we went through the different committees it yeah. wasn't just the uh, executive committee making yeah. the decision this is also something what i yeah. want to mention because the people every time gaston gaston yeah. gaston is not doing the rules gaston is the president i just say we have to do something that was my mission yeah. that i said to the commissions please bring proposals what we should change because if it would be my idea it would be a different one, but then I get again a shitstorm for nothing. <laughs> so the people should uh, using their brains before uh, saying something, and everybody can talk with me about everything. But I do not like when you are talking unrespectful to a president who do a lot for this sport. So they should show, first show me what they are doing for our sport instead of blaming the president because they are unhappy with the rule change. Yeah. The rule change, we have our commissions. There is the coach commission, the women's commission, the youth commission, the technical commission and the EC. So and first we give it to the commissions. That's our specialists, the lifters and the coaches, and they coming up with a proposal. And that proposal came from the lifter and the coach commission. So, and at the end, uh, we made some final changes because in the beginning there were some things people could not understand. So we have made that changes and then we discuss. I am the president. For me, I listen to my commissions. That's why we have commissions. Otherwise, we do not need them. But before, maybe it was like that, that commissions was not involved. But when I became the president, I said, we have for all our specialists, we have a medical uh, commission. So I do not interfere in matters where I am not a specialist. So I listen to our specialists and then I su support them. That's all. So the people don't know how it works, but they just try to blame the president for everything. And, and thus far, if I can add, thus far we had our bench, Powerlifting America had our bench press nationals in Reno, Nevada. And we had not one problem with the elbow rule. Um, there wasn't a mislift. Not a mislift. Everyone, you know, we gave uh, bri uh, briefings. Uh, we, t we spoke with the lifters. We notified them in advance. That's another thing that the IPF did. So the athletes were prepared coming into the event. They knew what the rules were or the new, the new rules were, and they adjusted um, to the new technical rules. Yeah. And, and then they were very successful. 
I think it's not the, a rule, the rules has been changed for the majority of our lifters. Yeah. 90 to 95 percent we said already before we uh, changed that <coughs> rules because we was watching in the competitions also before the, the rule uh, came in evolved. Uh, and uh, we have to look all our lifters as well. And the majority has every time done a, f a properly bench press. And it cannot be that a few lifters uh, just uh, uh, doing an incorrect bench press by making gym or whatever just to not push anything we are not a gymnastic bench press we are simple a bench press so and this is why the rule has been changed to make sure that we treat the lifters on the same way that everybody must pushing to get a, a medal or a world record or whatever it is and by the way we will also having a look on this year concerning the world records because I see that sometimes discussions going on if we will change the world record of course when we see now this year nobody can reach any more these records, then we will change the records, but just where it is necessary to do it. And I mean, I think overall, you have confidence in the lifters, in the, their ability to adjust and to make legitimate bench presses. Is that right? Yeah, I think uh, the, the, the lifters uh, know what they are doing and um, we have a commission uh, and these lifters are very good lifters uh, so they see also what's going on and when we are asking uh, the, to make proposals these people know what they do. Uh, and it's not Gaston who changed the rule because I, I am not the dictator and I have never been a dictator in this federation because we are so transparent as never before in the IPF. You, and if the people do not know what going on. They just need to go to our webpage www.powerlifting.sport. There are all the reports. There is my reports, what I said, what I will do. They can see what we have reached. There's a financial. So we have full transparent. We are a very serious federation like it should be. So, and we do not taking anybody's money in a pocket because we using the money back to the sport, and that's why we have these big supporters, Elico and and uh, uh, SPD, who supporting us because we have meetings with them when we say that is the next plan, what we will do, they, that they see that the money they invest in our sport is going in the right direction. Okay, so I think you know we covered the bench press rule. There's another rule out there that people want to have some explanation on and I think you're the you're the right person to explain it and that's the article 14 rule um, so could you guys just tell us why is this such an important rule in the IPF and what is it what is it in place for yeah. initially the, the this rule has been in, in our bylaws and our Constitution for a while now um, what well, when we uh, Secret John Peterson the vice president and I rewrote the um, <clears throat> the Constitution and uh, bylaws, what we did is uh, we added um, a, an addendum to that particular Article 14 rule, um, which includes national events. Uh, we want, and the, the purpose of the rule is we want everyone under one umbrella in terms of competition and drug testing. You know, we, it, it's important that our, if you're an IPF lifter coming to an IPF event, that you stay with us. Now, we're not saying that you cannot leave. You can leave, but there's a period of time before you can come back. And Everybody is free to go where yeah. you want uh, because uh, we have a rule. When you are a member of the IPF, you are a member of the IPF and nobody else because we are a serious federation and the only one who is recognized uh, by AIMS, GIVES and uh, the IWGA. So, and serious sport means serious sport. That means not you're running from one meet to another meet, left and right. The people always want that we do uh, fight against stopping. Yeah. We we had when when I became in IPF involved, we was on 15 percent. Now we are down under four percent. So that means that we have done a great work in the fight against stopping. But it cannot be that we fighting in our federation against stopping, and then people from us want running to other organization where suspend lifters from the IPF even taking part. That's not in all like this, but that is, and that's why this rule is in place. We and the <clears throat> it's not fair to the athletes that stay under the un IPF umbrella for athletes to leave and then come back where they're not tested for a period of one or two years and then come back. There has to be a period of time where <clears throat> they're watched and 
the testing uh, is available for those athletes. But I must also say that also a lifter who uh, leave uh, still uh, can be tested until one year after. So yeah. it is not just that the people say, now I go to that federation, yeah. I uh, do there something, then I do not get tested, and then I come back when I want to go to Worlds. So we're also not playing ping pong in our federation that everybody can, okay, now I come to IPF, then I go to here. The people who come to IPF comes to IPF because they know we are a serious federation and this is the way and our principles we have and people who follow our principle are welcome all those who think they must go to others I have no problem yeah. wherever they no. go I respect all the other people what they are doing I stay always out of the other federation and I expect that the other federation should also not interfere in the IPF some are trying just to blame always the IPF to make sure that the lifters go back to them. That it's uh, things what I do not like because that's unrespectful. I never interfere in other federation and I ask the other federation also look on this. We have the WPC. Never we have seen that IPF goes to the WPC or WPC against the IPF. Everybody do his job and we respect what everybody do and everybody is can feel free to go and join wherever he want. But in the IPF, you have one federation and you're just a member of our federation or you can't be a member. That it's also in soccer like this, that is in basketball like this. So there is not several federations. So I don't see in weightlifting uh, the same. So I do not see why it should be different in the powerlifting. Okay, great. So those were the controversial questions to ask you guys now I want to get into the I'm stuff. just going to ask or just going to say one other thing yeah, I would ask the athletes and the coaches uh, to step back and actually really look at the rule and why it's there it's there for a purpose it's been very effective we want the athletes to stay under the IPF umbrella and primarily for testing purposes it's not fair to, for one athlete to stay under the umbrella and for a athletes to leave. Now, those athletes can leave, but when they come back, um, they have that period, before they can come back, they have that period of 12 months. And the, the other thing, Gaston, that you make, point, um, you make your point on is that they, they can't lift in two world or three world championships in one year. Yeah. This is not fair to our athletes no that it's uh, what i said that it's not usually when you're playing basketball that you're playing basketball in one federation and then you go play basketball in another federation and uh, now maybe people say yeah boxing boxing is different there is different federation and they have agreements together mm -hmm. to have that but that's a different matter but in all other sports it is the, we we have a structure of the sport and the people don't understand the structure because they have never had this structure here in U.S. Uh, the structure of a sport, it's normally you have athletes, you have clubs. The clubs belongs to the federation. The federation is related to the National Olympic Committee and to Ministry of Sport. That is where it uh, is working uh, over 80% of the world like this. So, and when the people do not know that, then maybe they uh, talking what they talking, but they should first, when they do not know what's going on, should maybe asking somebody yeah. to do it. But not on Instagram. I'm always free to answer questions to people I by I, uh, and uh, if somebody respect me, I respect them, and everybody can ask the question. But I do not like when you try to blame a president who do so much. Uh, and have this brought this uh, sport so far uh, that you blame him because I spend 16 uh, hours a day for this sport and I don't do it for me, I do it for the lifters. Then I need get respected also by the lifters and not treat unrespectful on Instagram and so on. That's also why I do not answer people on Instagram because if I would answer them, uh, then uh, it would be not good as president what I would answer them. But maybe one day when I stop, then I can answer them. But now I have to uh, be... Uh, uh, Presidential. Uh, yeah, voilà. <laughs> so to make sure. What because I the problem is people don't know what's going on. They have no idea concerning uh, concerning testings they talking a lot of things uh, and have no idea and even some people who was before doing tests for us in our federation who spoke different and then suddenly they spoke the other way around uh, it's just uh, i don't know what's going on in the, these people had 
So the WADA code is the WADA code. We have the tier one level, that's the highest level existing, and that means something. To reach that, that means something. We were, were working very hard to reach this goal. Not even all the Olympic sports have reached that goal. So therefore, we do not let us uh, pushing in a corner uh, by someone who say, we're doing better, we here, because the testing is intelligent testing. And we have catched before the World Games four lifters who was selected to go the lifter to the World Games. We have catched uh, from one nation six lifters who are fam famous lifters. So our system is working and nobody wants must teach us how it is working because testing just the young kids that it's not the fight against stopping the test is on the elite you have to test majorly and around also your national level people have to organize this uh, not just ipf but also the nat nation should working on it but it is not always possible because not everywhere the people have a chance to have na nado working on this but also this is a goal where we are working on with ccs to make sure that we contact nados and that uh, more and more nations can also get uh, testings at their national championships in other countries and if not Therefore, we have the CCS, they know exactly what they do, and they go in the countries where this is not so possible. So all works very well, and we are happy about this good work, So, and that is what counts, and not, nothing else. Okay, well Gaston, um, also speak about the conflict of interest in terms of the, <coughs> the, the agreement we have with our national anti-doping, that we're totally out of the selection process, and... We're not involved. Yeah, in I, it. yeah. This is the, the this most is really important. Yeah, this is the most important. Uh, when some people think they must say we are like the IWF, then I must say just these people who talk this are like the IWF, because the president of the IPF and all the EC and everybody in the IPF has no fingers on anti-doping matters. That it's totally independent. It's the CCS who get the lists from the nominations, who choice, who send the team. Not even I know how many tests will be done. I do not even know who will be tested. We just get afterwards the results from it, and we get also at the end of the year a list uh, what kind of nation has been tested and so on. And of course, if there is somebody positive, it is already uh, on our webpage posted, so totally transparent. But it is not normal that national federation sending their own people <laughs> to test people, lift us, because that's a conflict of interest and that's totally against the water code. And it is also not normal that the president uh, uh, is working on this or that somebody in a federation is uh, um, giving TOEs to people. Uh, that's, uh, that's also not correct that the president is involved in TOEs or whatever. So that's why I am totally out of all and the EC members as well. So and we have also independent committees in the DHP panel. That means DHP panel is the people who, uh, after the, the people have been tested positive, doing the suspension or writing down the suspension. We have Jenny Soublet. She is a member. She was a former member of WADA, a lawyer. Then we have uh, a, a woman with a Greek, Greek name. Uh, I um, don't remember now the name, but she was a uh, lawyer from the CAS. So we have Dr. Moyoran, who is totally out of the IPF. So all these people are independent people who never have done powerlifting and so on. So more transparency in the sport and more fair it cannot be. And this is the way how it should be and nothing else. And every athlete has the right to refuse to be tested when an, an official from the Federation comes and say, we're coming for testing you yeah. because that's a conflict of interest in the water. And I've seen lately Yeah. And what is the importance of the blood test? Well, I'm not the expert to explain you that, but I know that the blood ex uh, the, the blood test now, since I'm involved, if I am remember good, we have never having a, a test a positive tested athlete by blood tests. I think for our sport, the urine test is much more important than the blood test. But of course, we are doing also blood tests uh, to make sure uh, that we're doing all what is uh, necessary. But that's up to the CCS to do that. So I'm not a specialist to tell you uh, here what is uh, more important or what is uh, better for the sport. So I'd just like to comment on uh, what Gaston said. Here in Powerlifting America, 
We will be signing, signing an agreement with the United States Anti-Doping Agency, USADA. Uh, all of our tests are basically going to be mere, uh, handled by this organization. The National Federation, Power of the America, will not have their hands in it. We will have no part. Uh, USADA will handle all drug testing and the selection of the athletes. This is the only fair way to handle drug testing. And it's not going to an uncertified lab. It's going, it'll go to the Salt Lake lab or a lab that's certified by the, uh, by the IOC and WADA. Yeah, and it would be for sure like this. If we know that the federation is doing their tests, the national yeah. member federation, of course we would di directly interfere in this and stopping uh, this because that's against the water code and we do not accept yeah. that somebody work against the water code. Yeah. That counts for everybody. Yeah, the athletes deserve fair, transparent, and honest testing. Athletes should not be testing athletes. Coaches should not be testing athletes. Referees should not be testing athletes. I've made this statement before. The athletes need to know this. They have rights. Yeah, I think and you can also explain that there is a difference if now uh, the, the company is coming for making tests and they're asking for um, uh, the people who uh, watch the people, how you call it, and... Um, the people who take you and take oh, care. DCOs. No, not the DCOs. Chaperones. The chaperones, yeah. That the chaperones, that can be uh, a member of the federation, but they are just there to, to bring you to watch that you not go out. Uh, so that's allowed. But testing and watching uh, the people making a pee, that's all just DCOs and they must be neutral. So it cannot be somebody from a federation who is going and watching on the toilet what he's doing because that's the conflict of interest. Chaperons is different. I'm an anti-doping officer in Luxembourg, not for powerlifting, but uh, for going testing other sport over our ministry of sport, uh, over, over our ministry and uh, the ALAT, the National Anti-Doping Agency. So chaperons, we take also chaperons from the sports, but they just there to make sure that the people not running away, bringing them to the anti-doping room, and then that's it, what they do. Nothing more, nothing less. And all the rest must be neutral people, otherwise you as an athlete can refuse to do the test. If you see that, you have the right to refuse. Yes. And if they're still forcing you, then you just write on your paper that you're not in agreement what has been done because you have been tested by a person from your federation, and that's a conflict of interest, and you have to mention that then on the report, uh, your paper, what you sign with the number of the sample and so on. There you can, under commands, writing when something is going wrong. And the athletes need to know that they have rights, especially in terms of <coughs> drug testing. And the samples that go to uncertified labs, uh, they have no idea on how they, the, the sample gets there. I mean, it has, to, it has to be done through the National Anti-Doping Agency, period. No, you know, any other process other than that, our, we are not going to subject our athletes to that process. And the other important matter is that you can test people only in what are recognized labs. Yes. Because all other is unfair for lifters. When you have a lifter who gets tested in the water lab and they're from the same team, a lifter who gets tested in the Quest lab, the one who get tested by the water lab, everybody will know what's going on. They, nobody can hide anything. But if you bring somebody to another lab who is not recognized, it will be not in the Adam system. They're not even testing all what uh, in the water lab is tested. And then if someone who has the finger on this, he can make their own decision if he declare afterwards if the person is positive or not, because he will be the only person who know then what's going on. But in a water system, it's not possible because the labs put all the information directly in the Adam system. So there nobody can hide anything. And the water looking on all, and when they see that something is going wrong, you get immediately an information from the water with questions and to investigate on it. 
So that's the difference, and therefore also people who get tested should, although we will, of course, never sending any uh, test to a non-water uh, yeah. lab, because that would be also a breach on our tier one level for the yeah. water. So, but that's the rules, and the people don't know about it. But they talking, 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 because somebody else put them in the ears things what is not true. So, if you w do not want to be interested on the real regulations and so on, so then just stay out on it and don't discuss about it. And the rules are there. Go to the water page, read yeah. the water rules if you want to know how it works. Yeah, I would. Yeah, we would encourage the athletes to take the time to educate themselves on the correct processes uh, in terms of any doping and the drug testing process. Um, by not, by uh, having your samples tested in a non-certified lab, you're gambling. You don't know who's testing your sample, what certifications they have, um, you know, how the sample's getting there, it's it's a flawed process, a seriously flawed process, and you know. Um, <clears throat> and I want also to say yeah. something, and that is very important. It's never good when w only one person handles these things, because then it can be like it was in other big federations, and that people want to uh, put us in that direction. Then people can manipulate. Yeah. But w when I was becoming involved in the IWF and uh, the IPF. I made sure that in the time when we started, there was also only one person involved with this. I made sure that this not more happened. So that minimum several time, several person in that time was knowing what's going on. So now, of to uh, now it's totally different because now it's not more in our hands. Now it's on the hands of uh, CCS and in the Adam system, and there everybody can follow it up the water. And uh, uh, so that is no possibility to manipulate anti-doping and this is what I like and this I'm happy and proud about it All right, well, uh, yeah and comment. one other comment one you know if you're an athlete at the national or local national level here in powerlifting America the test is the same if you go to the world championship or even the Olympic Games or the world games the tests are performed identically so and we, uh, and I must stress, Gaston, we are out of the process. You know, the, the it's going to be handled by USADA. The selection of the athletes, the testing protocols, all done through USADA, yeah. and all done. I through think that's CCS. also a good point you brought up because the authority from the WADA, what the WADA say, authority are the IPF, and the National Anti-Doping Agency, nobody yeah. else. Yeah. No national federation is a water authority and no national federation is allowed to do tests. So just to one point that out, but even we as IPF who are the authority, we have given it out to CCS to make sure that they do the all and that we not have our hands on it and that nobody can say in the IPF they manipulate something. Yeah. This is the right way to do things, the and correct way. Yes, and the athletes have rights and they really need to enforce their own personal rights yeah. to make sure that they are being tested in accordance to the international standard of testing protocols. So I want to change gears. Okay. And talk about I think we can. Yeah. For one second, and I'll let you guys go because I know we got to go and, yeah. and run this powerlifting meet. Yeah. But um, I know that in the last few years, the IPF has made a lot of progress uh, in terms of getting sponsorships, in terms of getting more eyeballs on the sport. Um, the Eurosport contract was a big deal. The World Games just happened. Gaston, can you tell us just a little bit about the positive things that are coming for the IPF and where the future may take us in the IPF? Yeah, I think the positive thing is now that we are working very hard uh, on the FISU, that it's very important in university sport, because next year we will have the first FISU uh, university championships, uh, that it's uh, uh, so that then the university are nominating the lifters uh, and the FISU is responsible on, on it, but we working together with them and the lifters must 
be a member, of course, of the IPF because of our anti-doping program. So that it's uh, I looking very forward uh, on this. Unfortunately, the last one was not working for, for the reasons everybody know uh, because of the war. What's going on on this world now? And therefore, we organized some cups in between. And uh, FISU is very happy with the good job we have done. And the FISU have three uh, levels where you uh, recognized. Uh, and we are now on the second level. So even we have not yet organized uh, over the FISU directly uh, meet, but they are so happy with our work, what we are doing. Uh, Always when they come to us and say you have to do this and this, we say yes, we will do. We also doing from ourselves, we looking to find organizers, even universities, and they are happy on this because they said oh, sometimes the Olympic sport, they just tell them what to do, but we are very cooperative with the FISU and therefore uh, it's on that level. So I'm looking forward on this because the university sport is uh, one of the most important where you can recruit uh, athletes of course and uh, my goal on this is every time when the university nominate the lifters, I assume because we have some universities, they pay for the lifters everybody. So that these young lifters must not pay from their own pocket the money. That it's, uh, uh, I hope when now it starts over FISU that every university will do that because that will be of course very good for the lifters. So and then the other uh, major event is still uh, IOC recognition. We never give up. We still have fulfilled criteria. I think the way we have now uh, worked with Eurosport uh, is a way also in the uh, right direction because we had 15 million view, direct views on Eurosport worldwide and I think that it's not nothing uh, and this is very important and with this you can also make pressure when you uh, request IOC recognition. Uh, we had a meeting uh, now with Eurosport and they have a long, want a long-term contract with us. So that's say also enough because uh, getting into Eurosport is not every time easy and getting a place there. So we will try to work out more and more that we get also uh, in the future more uh, time from them. Now we have two sessions. We full uh, showing on uh, Eurosport and then the highlights, but we will looking to get more and more from the Eurosport so that our people, uh, the stars, like I say, are known in powerlifting because everybody knows the strong man so why the people not know our people and i think with your sport you can make sure that our stars also become uh, worldwide uh, heroes uh, of our sport that the people know oh uh, ray williams that's the guy from the power League. i think this is the message what we want and why we investing money in our sport to make our sport much more popular and we have already seen that our sport becomes more popular since also we have uh, Eurosport but also when we have started our streamings I said every time if the people not come to you you must bring the sport to the people yeah. so and that it's working very well and, and yeah and we are on the Olympic channel always uh, when we have our streamings and I think that's all uh, done because we do a good job because the Olympic channel would not show uh, a streaming when it would be not on good quality even the Eurosport they don't send their own cameras they're taking our uh, from our Viva v uh, TV uh, team uh, all there directly so and this is good the only what is sometimes uh, it can be that on Eurosport uh, and a commentator who has not the knowledge about uh, powerlifting uh, it's not maybe the best solution but we also talking with Eurosport about this and we go step by step to make sure that Eurosport get and also people who have better knowledge in powerlifting to co commentate uh, this. So and then uh, I think uh, yeah the, the the education program it's uh, most important. We have now engaged the Dima Wolf as full coach for the IPF. He's working on education program. We working on basic. Basic it's for all those nations coming from countries where the people don't have possibilities to have a clinic. So to make sure that we don't get lifters coming to a competition and then they fail uh, by rules because they don't know it better or by te uh, techniques because the technique is not very good. So that's why we going now there uh, 
Piotr and Dietmar have worked out the program, so we're going to to the nation itself. We will have now one in Jamaica, uh, the first one uh, on the basic level. So we had also last week again level two in uh, Halmstad, and it was successful, a lot of people there. So we have already again the next uh, Halmstad uh, people ready for going there. So and this is very important because education is important. And it's also not just important to be a coach, to know how powerlifting is, but also the responsibilities coaches have. Especially when you go with kids around, uh, the parents send you kids, they say, okay, they are in good hands. But that means also that the coach has to take care about the kids and not just let them do in the evening what they want and uh, some, but some happen to so all these things we want to educate the coach so we will uh, make sure also that in the future a uh, head coach must have a certificate that he has made minimum a basic uh, education and then we will go forward the next step also with coaches or assistant coaches so that is the steps we are doing to make sure that our sport and also our member nations get much more professional in the sport one of the things that uh, powerlifting america has done is uh, we instituted background checks for all of our referees our coaches and our officials and it's a level two which includes the fbi background check so we screen all of our coaches um, <clears throat> especially our national team coaches, to ensure the safety of the sub-junior and junior athletes, and, and the adult athletes as well, uh, that they're not being harmed. And, uh, yeah, so and this is something we've, uh, in the IPF, we're developing is a safeguarding policy uh, that will be uh, sent to all the IPF member federations. Uh, this, this is nearly done, and this is another positive step for us, Gaston, yeah. as we march toward IOC recognition. And I want to say also, we have commission, we have a lifters commission. In the lifters commission, we have a male and a female. So when people have a problem or uh, something, they can reach out to this, therefore they are there. So we have also a women's commission where women can go. We have a youth commission when youth have yeah. a problem. And as you mentioned, now the safeguard officer, that's uh, yeah. one we are working on, so that if people get uh, harassed, sexual harassed and so, that they have a person they can go in immediately through. And we, of course, would not accept this in any things. And uh, for this, we have also Court of Justice, Court of Appeal, and so on. That is also the right way how to do things. That not an executive committee handle matters, but that a disciplinary committee or Court of Justice or Appeal committee uh, working out these matters yeah. to be independent as well. Yeah. So I think that uh, we have given a lot of information. I hope that people have learned something about it. it those who will not learn, they never learn it. That doesn't matter. You can talk whatever you want. They, if they have something against the IPF, then they will uh, not listen. But that doesn't matter. I don't care about this. I don't look and I do not answer people on Instagram. So if somebody has a question, I meet them at the Worlds or at National or at Regionals. And you can see here, everybody can come to the president discussing. We in the evening sitting together, drinking a glass discussing and I never afraid to answer questions so but I do that in respect with the people who respect me and I respect the people and this is what I expect from people when there is a discussion everybody can have a discussion you can like that that is a change you cannot like but then discuss it in a proper way and not in a stupid way with all what they bring out uh, and we have also therefore a policy uh, uh, how you talk and how you treat people on instagram and so on uh, social media policy uh, and so social media policy yeah. Gaston, it's been really nice having you here at this Nationals because I think a lot of the athletes, as you said, have got to get to know you a little bit more, yeah. got to hang out with you and ask, ask questions and just talk to you about normal everyday things, you know, and realize that you're a normal person just like all of us. And it's been really a fun time having you here. So thank you so much for coming. We're looking forward to having you here at our Nationals more in the future and seeing you at more events in North America in general because we also got to see you down in Panama and hang out yeah. and uh, spend some time and it's, it's really been a fun time uh, getting to know you more and so I really appreciate you coming out here for this. Thank you. I'd just like to close uh, by saying it, that the IPF will be very active in the United States. Uh, they'll be making more trips. 
uh, to meet m more of the athletes, more of the officials. Um, we want to get to know, or our, we want our people in Power of the America to get to get to know the IPF. We're all the IPF. We're all members of the IPF. Yeah, I think that it's a major point. What I mention every time, we are like a family. And uh, this is why I'm the president, and this is why I'm working so hard for this sport, because it's not just the work I do, but also the fun we have after together, to sit together as friends. And this is how we handle people, on a friendly way, on a respectful way, and this is what I like. If this will not be happened, then I will not be the president. Uh, that is the, the fun we have uh, after the hard work uh, to sit together with the people in the evening talking uh, and so on. And that is what I mentioned before, never before it was like this, this that the uh, president has been invited by uh, US uh, Federation and therefore I'm really happy, Robert, thank you again that uh, you and your staff that you was inviting me to coming here. Yeah. It was a big pleasure for me to be here and I feel now really that we have now USA also in the family of the IPF and that it's uh, great very important. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. All right, well, let's go uh, watch some huge squats today and have a good time and uh, go out and have dinner tonight and hang out with all the athletes. Yeah, yeah and we you. wish all the athletes good luck for these sessions. Thank you for having us. All right. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you. Good job, guys.